bad luck meditation. I've had my share of bad luck, and you don't want to know what kind. After three solid years of bad luck, I took action. I started my bad luck meditation. I'd sit on my black Zafu cushion and picture bad luck as some sort of person, not necessarily good looking, as you might expect, because bad luck often wears a good face. I'd stare at bad luck, snarky eyes, grab a crowbar, wind it back, and slam it square against, his, against bad luck's sp spine. Morning after morning, I'd break that fucker's back. It made me feel good. Now, that's not what the New Age people tell you to do. Instead, they have you focus instead on inviting good luck in by opening windows and recounting all that you're grateful for, including having windows and two good arms to open the window. That's not how you deal with bad luck. That's how you air out a stanky room by while pretending you're Mary Poppins. I saw bad luck in traction, moaning in pain, his lips parched and begging for relief, and no one ever brought him flowers. When I met Steve, I knew that my life would finally turn. One way to become good luck, you see, is to ha hang around other good luck people. And the sort who can tolerate the final bitter finger bad luck snarled around your big toe right before the bastard finally lets go. Steve was good luck. Steve was double good luck. He created anything he wanted and made a fortune selling it to people who didn't even know they wanted it. So, this is what I learned. You can be determined. You can shatter bad luck's back with an iron crowbar or a baseball bat every morning for two years and then meet a man <clears throat> who tolerates that whiff of despair you wear altogether. You court better times. Steve and myself, we became good luck people for each other. It's a thing that we guarded. That's subtle business. But here's the thing. You never see it coming. But one day you wake up and discover that good luck guy you've been sleeping with for six years has become bad luck. And then you can't pull the crowbar maneuver because both of you have become bad luck people. And then, What's the sense in breaking both your backs? <laughs> so, you know, the thing about the gay rainbow, which is so brilliant, is that it's up in the sky, and it's everywhere, and you can't really think about, I don't need anymore, uh, you can't really think about rainbows without thinking of the gay community, which I think is really, really cool. It's so ubiquitous, right? Um, and the thing that's really special is that religious leaders are really pissed off. Um, and, and it's to the point, if you've been noticing that um, religious leaders and groups, they're accusing the gays of stealing the rainbow. Right? They're, they're, they're accusing us of actually stealing it. They want us to give it back. So I wrote um, a piece that's in retort to, um, to that sentiment. I need four volunteers. It's a little bit of an audience participation piece. Four volunteers. There's one. Come on up. I can't see. Oh, come on up. Come on up. Oh, there we go. One, two, three, four. Evan. I have to get my prop. <laughs> I heard got five. Oh. 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 Okay, so I need one person here. Uh, this is my friend Ziggy. Hi. Hi.
Okay, so you need to hold your sign just a little bit down. And what's going to happen is I'm going to say certain words. I'm sorry. I'm going to say certain words in my piece, and when I say them, I'll. I'll I don't know if this is going to work, uh, but I'll. <laughs> I'll kind of indicate you, and then you're going to hold your sign up, and then we're all going to say the word together. So let's practice. God's gay rainbow. One more time. Put it down. God's gay rainbow. Magic. One more time. Magic. The gay rainbow brand. One more time. The gay. <laughs> okay, and I wrote this specifically because I saw a tweet one day, a couple months ago. It's actually from about a year ago. And um, the tweet was from Brian Fisher. And Mr. Fisher is head of the American Family Values, whatever. whatever. Um, so this is Brian's tweet, and then I'll read my response. Brian says in his tweet, uh, Worst example of cultural appropriation ever. <clears throat> LGBT stole the rainbow from God. It's his. He invented it. Genesis 9, 11, 17. Give it back. <laughs> okay, you have to be, you have to get ready because you're coming up, okay? Here we go. During LGBT Pride Month, the gays are ever grateful that God gave us his most wondrous invention, the rainbow, a penultimate symbol of joy beauty and hope. Thank you, God. <laughs> we freely share this blessed splash of color with everyone, even though technically we own the intellectual property rights to God's gay rainbow, as he terms it and has so branded it for us. <laughs> Recently, some have accused the gay of stealing the rainbow from the creator himself. <laughs> this is so not true. God gave it to us back in 1978. <laughs> Google it. <laughs> Give it back, religious leader, leaders cry. You've ripped God off. Oh my God, we are so sorry that they feel this way. And of course we would give the rainbow back in a flash if God asked for it. <laughs> but he hasn't. <laughs> in the end, we must respect his word. <laughs> or lack thereof. God's gay rainbow exists in the sky for everyone to enjoy. That is why God chose the heavens rather than say a trademark on boulders or cow pastures for his marketing and branding strategy for the gays. He wanted the gays. to be celebrated by all so he placed his big gay logo up as high as he could. You cannot miss it. The distribution channels are everywhere. We are talking worldwide. The gay Designed by God. God is his promise to all of life. The gay Tells everyone what they can expect from the Joy, beauty, color, variety, symmetry, balance. That's your only chance, by the way. <laughs> you, you can sit down now. We're, we're going to do that line one more time. The gay, the, the gay rainbow. God gay rainbow. Tells everyone what they can expect. The gay Joy, beauty, color, variety, symmetry, balance. Magic. And appreciation of an appreciation of life's duality. Because remember, it takes both the sun and rain to make. God gay rainbow. On that point. 
you are aware that God saved the rainbow appears only after a rain because of this scientific fact. Those are God's tears, and they are tears of joy. On occasion, God simply breaks down with wild exultation that he was astute enough to create the rain and then brand them with a rainbow. <laughs> Genius! Best marketing plan ever! So God weeps, bathing the earth with a cleansing rain, and then some sun, and then... God save rainbow! Talk about intelligent design. <laughs> now, some point to a passage in the book of Genesis that supposedly explains the rainbow's origins. After the great flood, God formed a new covenant between Noah and his descendants, promising to never commit mass murder by drowning billions again. <laughs> the key phrase seems to be by, by drowning, which in contractual terms is quite limited. Anyway, God creates a rainbow as a sign of his somewhat good intentions. <laughs> this supposedly proves that God did not give his rainbow to the gays. That is so not true. <laughs> Noah was gay. <laughs> His family was just a cover. <laughs> and even if Noah was straight, doubtful, God clearly solidified his high-profile branding, branding decision back in 1978. <laughs> in conclusion, <laughs> please remember this. While being the intellectual property of okay. is actually regulated by God him herself. It is God who ultimately calls the shots regarding his branding powers. If he so chooses, God can withdraw his rainbow should he become displeased with his gay creation. He could instead give his rainbow to say Bulgaria. <laughs> <laughs> this is a somber point of which the okay have always been acutely aware. We hope this never happens. We would be devastated if God's, rain, if God's rainbow intellectual property rights were transferred to Bulgaria. Because we love God and are so honored that he chose us for his most precious and holy branding mark. Woo!